Beware the moon and cursed night, and take heed to snuff your candlelight. A hound of shade doth stalk these lands, and those who cross him are soon to feel death's icy hands. A guardian and an omen, neither benign nor malevolent, the hounds of the afterlife are to be found wherever there is death and destruction. No one knows from whence these creatures come, yet they exist in all sacred places, such as graveyards, as well as torn and cursed areas of the world, such as battlefields. All such areas inevitably attract these otherworldly guardians. Often appearing in the visage of a dog, these hellhounds are terrifying to behold. With vent of black fur, unnatural movement, and a keen and deliberate intelligence, these creatures guard the areas of the world where the entrances between ours and the one which comes after are thinnest. Like common hounds, this creature comes in various breeds, the most common being the shadow black breed. However, those that drool fire or acid also exist. Indeed, these elements might make themselves visible on the coat of the creature itself. Vicious and quite dangerous physically, the Hellhound is a fearsome beast to encounter. It is best to avoid areas that are guarded by these animals, lest one provoke them. However, the danger they pose does not end there. Some breeds are so potent that merely laying eyes on them is enough to doom an unlucky viewer to an untimely death. Usually, three sightings are sufficient enough exposure to condemn any person unlucky enough to encounter them. However, there are those breeds that require only a single viewing in order to shorten one's life. Often people will flee in terror upon hearing the unearthly howl of this creature, if only to avoid seeing it. Only grave diggers, morticians, and others marked by death in some way are free from this creature's molestations. The danger these creatures pose is tempered by the fact that they are primarily interested in guarding their territory, so one can easily avoid encountering this beast by staying away from those areas. Killing the beast is a difficult task indeed. Their supernatural powers make them able to withstand even the most crushing of blows. Despite this, the creatures can often be lulled into sleep with fair music or a loving voice. Though, earning sufficient time to render the creature somnolent is difficult given the threat it poses. All that besides, one should not desire to enter the world of the dead so readily, as this hellhound is hardly the most threatening thing one will encounter on such a journey. Ultimately, these hellhound creatures remain an enigma. We know not from whence they come, nor can we safely encounter them. Though they pose no direct threat to humanity, their vicious and varied nature leads us to conclude that, occasionally, it is best to simply let sleeping dogs lie. Human beings are unique animals in that we have intentionally formed symbiotic relationships with a wide variety of animals, from birds to bisons, almost every major kingdom is represented in our retinue of relationships. However, above all animals, the dog has come to hold a unique position in our symbiosis. Indeed, this relationship between humanity and the hound is very special, in that although both species are quite capable when independent of one another, each gain much in the way of hunting prowess in the light of their combined cross-species strength. As loyal guards and loving companions, dogs are peerless in their connection to the lives of human beings. It is for this reason that we find consistent appearances of dogs and other canines throughout myth and culture, from the dog-headed Anubis of Egyptian culture to the modern zombie dogs. These creatures have existed within human culture since time immemorial. This unique relationship has given rise to equally unique myths and legends related not only to the dog itself, but to the relationship we share with them. The image of a dog protecting its territory, or loyally defending the corpse of its dead master, is perhaps the most obvious inspirational image for this creature. That even in death, we may trust our companions to protect our bodies and souls is a logical extension of what we already see in daily life. The oldest mention of the hellhound creature is the famous Cerberus creature of Greek culture. The guard dog of Hades, who protected the entrance to the underworld, with three heads and a fearsome temperament, this creature greatly influenced European culture. This is perhaps why the majority of myths related to the Hellhound can be found in Europe and specifically in the United Kingdom. The Bargast, Black Shuck, Bearer of Death, and many more similar creatures occupy various parts of the United Kingdom. Each creature is slightly different in some way, from abilities to details in appearance. Some might kill with a look, while others are benign, and some are even able to transform into people. It is unclear as to what aspect of the culture in the UK would produce such a variety and multitude of hellhound creatures. 
Of note is the research done by one Nick Stone, a photographer who has been gathering accounts of Hellhound stories and mapping them. As we can see, there is a prominent concentration in the United Kingdom. The BBC implies that this is due to the fact that the United Kingdom is indeed the origin of the Hellhound creature as we know it today. Although Cerberus and other mythical dogs do populate Europe, these particular creatures are confined to the gates of Hell or the afterlife, while the Hellhound, with which we are familiar, is able to move around and stalk across the land and possesses a more spiritual character to its nature. It would appear that the mythical wild hunt, as well as the subtle persistence of Anglo-Saxon myths and superstitions, is responsible for the English Hellhound. The wild hunt was often accompanied by their hunting dogs, and due to the essentially supernatural nature of the hunt, it then logically follows that the hounds themselves would be similarly characterized and delineated. Indeed, the oldest known description of the Hellhound can be found in the 11th and 12th century Anglo-Saxon Chronicle from Petersburg. Thus, we see the defining of two strains of Hellhound, the antique Hellhound, such as Cerberus, who will guard Hell or the afterlife, and the Anglo-Saxon Hellhound, which will haunt a particular territory. There do exist similar creatures in other cultures, though nowhere near the same variety and concentration as what we find in the United Kingdom. In Asia, we find the sun-eating Tiangyao, or the Okuri Inu, that stalks the witless as they travel. In the Americas, we find the bichromatic Kadejo, who can speak with humans, and has the hooves of goats. However, due to the cultural ubiquitousness of the Anglospheric cultures in modern day, we can see many various depictions of the Anglo-Saxon hellhound in cultural artifacts. Even those cultures outside of the Anglosphere have contributed to this myth. From video games to novels and of course film, there is hardly any horror or mythological story that is bereft of this creature in modern times. Most notable among these depictions in culture are the Grimm from Harry Potter, the Hound from the Hound of Baskervilles, and the Cerberus dogs from Resident Evil. In these three depictions, we find the full extent of permutations of the Hellhound creature, where the Grimm is more similar to the typical Hound of the Wild Hunt, while the Hound of Baskervilles is ultimately an abused mongrel of Bloodhound and Mastiff. At last, the Cerberus from Resident Evil represents the Hellhound combined with the modern conception of pestilence and science gone awry. Though whatever the origin was in the past, it is certain that the Hellhound has become a common creature in modern times. Given that dogs are beloved by people the world over, it would then not be surprising to see this myth take fast root in our lifetimes. We may well be witnessing the seeding of a myth, a very rare event for people to be conscious of. We should take heed to see how the Hellhound myth might evolve and grow now that more people have been exposed to it than ever before. Who knows what might come from it? The Hellhound is a strange creature to place in the real world, not because it possesses any ability so unreasonable as to be impossible, but rather that it is so normal and typical of real creatures to begin with. In both the antique and Anglo-Saxon Hellhound, we see the primary reason for the selection of this creature in these myths already existing as typical aspects of normal dogs, although these are aspects that are expressed to an extreme degree in the myths. Loyalty, territoriality, and an inexplicability to kill those who encounter it without attacking them. These aspects are decidedly well within the realm of possibility. We often see accounts of dogs becoming depressed and dying shortly after their owner passes away or guarding their master's body. Indeed, we see in Unilad the story of a dog that died 11 years after its master passed away, where it would visit the grave of his master every day following the master's death, while another dog refused to leave a hospital waiting for his dead master to return. Although dogs are very loyal, such a singular connection is very rare to say the least. We can imagine that these particular canines possess genes that lend them to a rather powerful level of codependence to a particular human. This would naturally result in strange behaviours such as the visiting of graveyards or other such areas that they associate with the departed individual, which would result in the strange stalking and graveyard dwelling behaviour that we see in the Hellhound. This in turn can be combined with the dog's natural territorial nature. In Eastern Europe, particularly former Soviet countries, as well as the South American nations, we find a mass of stray dogs. These animals pose quite a problem to the local inhabitants, as the dogs will often engage in territorial conflicts, and even occasionally threatening and attacking people. This problem is particularly acute in nations such as Romania and Peru, where an inordinate amount of stray dogs have laid claim to large areas of these countries and their cities. 
This territorial behavior combined with the dog's tendency to frequent places where their deceased masters have been or are buried makes for a particularly frightening creature, especially if encountered without any additional knowledge of the circumstances which brought it there. Already, just with these two aspects, we have something very much resembling the mythical hellhound creature. A surprising situation as we have hardly to change any basic feature of the dog very much at all. We have but one final matter to explain, namely the death curse that the dog carries. This matter is rather not too complicated. Stray dogs or street dogs, for those that have grown up without masters, present a particularly dire hazard for people and other animals in the environment, as these dogs are likely to carry a variety of diseases that might easily be transmitted to human beings. The most common of these diseases is rabies. However, it usually requires that a dog bite a victim in order to spread the disease. Other diseases may be left behind at the dog's urine or feces. This can become a rather dire olfactory problem in cities afflicted with these poor creatures. Toxicoriasis and leptospiriosis are some of the most common diseases that can be spread by these stray dogs. And since the animal is occupying certain areas for long periods of time, we can imagine that these diseases will build up in places and areas around them. Thus, when one sees a hellhound frequently enough, this may be an indicator that one has encountered the diseases that it carries with an equal amount of frequency, and therefore contract the diseases. Although most of these infections may be very easily treated today, they nevertheless pose a threat where toxicoriasis can even lead to meningitis and subsequently death. It is then a simple matter to conclude that in a pre-antibiotic world, such infections would almost certainly have been a death sentence to anyone who contracted them. With these three aspects, loyalty, territoriality, and disease propagation, we have created quite a believable hellhound. Though lacking many of the more supernatural aspects we might expect from the myth, the primary characteristics are easily found in our dogs today without much alteration. Therefore, we may conclude that, for all intents and purposes, the Anglo-Saxon hellhound is indeed a very real creature, and stalks our world in abundance. Although these creatures are frightening, they are ultimately pitiable. The circumstances that would drive them to become a hellhound are ones of great sorrow, such as losing a loved one. With such a perspective, we can only hope that their number would be reduced, more for their sake than our own.